Hey everybody, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats, <laughs> and to you. Um, this one's a little bit of dangerous. Sorry, he just meowed at me, I don't know if you could hear him. There's just a little, you need to get ready for your close-up, Henry. You look handsome. <laughs> well, we have the backside of Henry, but uh, okay. You've got a little bit of dry skin. I think it's, you know, when the heat comes on. Henry, do we have to treat you with some, give you a spa treatment to help your dry skin? Okay, well, anyway, let's read Numbers chapter 12. Okay, we'll jump in. Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to oh no, sorry, I just lost my kitty. Oh man. Okay, hold on. I, I so it's like shepherding cats. You just can't do it. Um, okay, what to do? I I feel like there should be something that you you should be looking at that's somewhat you know, cat somewhat cat like and interesting. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna look for something again. Okay, there's the stand-in cat from the book Animals, Immortal Being, Scriptural Evidence of the Immortality of Animals, Mary Buttermeyer Porter, author of Will I See Fido in Heaven, Additional Commentary with Scripture by Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Wesley, John Pope Paul II, and others. Okay, I guess it's like a bunch of essays on that. Um. I apologize, but I kind of just want to get through the Bible. What's happening is Guster and Henry are now eating their, their dinner in the other, in the kitchen. So I'm not sure they're going to be back, but I want to do a video because I post every day. So apologies. Would you like to see a puppy? <laughs> I don't know. It is reading the Bible to cats, so. This this little dog is very cute though. Hmm. Okay. This is this is kind of sad. <laughs> Here, we'll just do that. Oh. Okay. We'll just you can look at the puppy for a change. Even though the channel is called Reading the Bible to Cats. It looks as if he is listening. Okay, back to the Bible. And maybe a cat will show up. Hmm. Okay, well, God bless you if you're still <laughs> with me on this channel. Alrighty. Oh, here comes a kitty. Oh, he's going in his box. Okay. Well. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll let him settle, and then we'll go back to Henry. So anyway, back to, okay, the Bible. Verse 2, has the Lord spoken only through Moses, they asked? Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord, the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. He stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, 
Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous. It became as white as snow. Aaron turned toward her and saw that she had a defiling skin disease, and he said to Moses, Please, my Lord, I ask you not to hold against us the sin we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like a stillborn infant coming from its mother's womb with its flesh half eaten away. So Moses cried out to the Lord, Please, God, heal her. The Lord replied to Moses, If her father had spit in her face, would she not have been in disgrace for seven days? Confine her outside the camp for seven days. After that, she can be brought back. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move on till she was brought back. After that, the people left Hazaroth and encamped in the desert of Paran. Oh, okay. Um, well, what started all of this at the beginning is Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his wife, his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. So they were, you know, kind of, sounds like they were being, you know, um, kind of racist I, I think Kushites I believe that's Ethiopia um so I think she was Ethiopian and uh so God God did not like that um I do like when the Lord says that he reveals I just heard a funny noise and I don't know what that was oh that he reveals himself to them in visions and speaks, you know, the prophets. Uh, when there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. And then it goes on. With, with him I speak face to face clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting that how God chooses to speak to the prophets, you know, and reveal himself through visions and, and even in dreams, like he enters people's dreams. Oh, Guster's coming up here. Guster, can you just... Uh, oh. He's going to give me a hug again. Uh, so, and then also in verse 8, you know, he speaks to Moses face to face clearly and not in riddles. Yeah, sometimes the Lord does speak in riddles. Well, you think of Jesus and the parables. You know, he it was kind of parabolic. <laughs> That's the right word, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the New Testament and go to Acts 24. Esther is really purring. But I want us to go over to Henry, but then I'll have to move Guster. Okay, sorry. Let's do that now. Sorry, Guster. We're going to move. Oh, oh. Okay. Just moving the camera. Let's see if I can situate this. Ta-da! Ta-da! It's Henry. In his box. Uh-oh, but I've got a little problem with Guster. It, sometimes it's hard to read the Bible to cats. Sometimes it's difficult to read the Bible to cats. Now Guster's stepping on me, and he's going to step on the iPad. What he does is he, he, 
he literally hugs me so he um crawls up like to my he just hugs my neck basically and but he's like stepping on me and I'm not knock the iPad Ooh. knock on the iPad over okay I think he's in position for his hug so we'll just hear you you can hear him purr I hope you heard him purr. Okay, let's go to Acts 24. <laughs> Henry! Five days later, the high priest Ananias went down to Caesarea with some of the elders and a lawyer named Tertullus, and they brought their charges against Paul before the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullus presented his case before Felix. We have enjoyed a long period of peace under you, and your foresight has brought about reforms in this nation. Everywhere and in every way, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with profound gratitude. But in order not to weary you further, I would request that you be kind enough to hear us briefly. We have found this man, man to be a troublemaker. Sorry, you guys. I have to move. I have to move Guster. That's me talking, not the Bible. Because he, um, <laughs> well, sorry, Guster. We'll hug after. Because I was about to topple every, everything over. We'll hug after, okay? Now he's going to go to Henry, I think. Okay, back to the Bible. But in order not to weary you further, I would request that you be kind enough to hear us briefly. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect and even tried to desecrate the temple. So we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn the truth about all these charges we are bringing against him. The other Jews joined in the accusation, asserting that these things were true. When the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you have been a judge over this nation, so I gladly make my defense. You can easily verify that no more than 12 days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone at the temple or stirring up a crowd in the synagogues or anywhere else in the city, and they cannot prove to you the charges they are now making against me. However, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe that that is in accordance with the law and that and that is written in the prophets and i have the same hope in god as these men themselves have that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked so i strive always to keep my conscience clear before god and man after an absence of several years i came to jerusalem to bring my people gifts for the poor and to present offerings I was ceremonially clean when they found me in the temple courts doing this. There was no crowd with me, nor was I involved in any disturbance. But there are some Jews from the province of Asia who's, who ought to be here before you and bring charges if they have anything against me. Or these who are here should state what crime they found in me when I stood before the Sanhedrin, unless it was this one thing I shouted as I stood in their presence. It is concerning the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. Then Felix, who was well acquainted with the way, adjourned the proceedings. When Lysias, the commander, comes, he said, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, but to give him some freedom and permit his friends to take care of his needs. Several days later, Later, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. 
He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul talked about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe, so he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus because Felix wanted to grant a favor to the Jews. He left Paul in prison. Okay, everyone, we read uh, chapter Acts 24, and uh, yeah, this was, um, there was a lot in here that I wanted to, as I was reading it, I was like, oh, we need to talk about that. But what I thought was interesting was how uh, Christians at the time, you know, Paul refers to uh, the Christians as the way you know because jesus once said i'm the tr- um, i'm the way the truth and the life and uh so yeah it, it, it'd be interesting to think um what it'd be like if we were called the way today and not christians because <laughs> i think the the name christian stuck you know obviously stuck with us but i don't know when that happened I used to know, but I've forgotten. But anyway, yeah, so, you know, they were calling it a Nazarene sect, and he said he was a follower of the way. Um, I think that's what Paul said. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, Paul, I think Paul said he was a follower of the way. Uh, yeah, so Paul's having to take his stand, and Felix became afraid and didn't want to hear about judge- the judgment to come. Felix's wife was Jewish, Drusilla. But yeah, he was really wanting a bribe, too. So it was like he was kind of interested, but when it came to, you know, righteousness self-control and the judgment to come he he became afraid and that but he kept calling for him because he wanted you know all to offer a bribe (laughs) oh man well yeah happy happy hanukkah everyone let us close in prayer and thank you for your prayers for me i appreciate it i still need them so keep keep them coming okay well henry's in his box but let's see if we can get him to turn around henry where's bug that'll do it you can at least see his eyes as we close in prayer henry where's bug He's tired. Okay, well, let's close in prayer. Lord, um, thank you for your word. I, um, yeah, I confess my, I'm distracted tonight and anxious, as you know, is about the labs. <laughs> I just lift that up to you and um, follow the the um, example of Moses, who was very direct with you and <laughs> said what was on his heart. So, Lord, I personally ask for um, I would like better labs. These these weren't good, and I just pray for uh, healing in that area. We know you are the God of miracles. I know you don't always heal, but I know you do heal. I know Paul had a thorn in his flesh that you didn't take away, and he prayed three times that you would take it away, and your answer was no, because I forget your reasoning. But anyway, I do pray you rectify my situation with my labs, which could indicate a a real problem. So um, lift that up to you. 
and ask for help. Pray also for um, peace, love, and joy during this season of, you know, Hanukkah, the light coming into the, well, the light <laughs> and the light coming into the world, Christmas, Jesus, just bring us joy, gift us with peace, and bless us with your presence, Emmanuel. And of course, we pray that you ransom captive Israel, that you deliver the captive, set them free. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Israel and for healing for all the hurting families. And again, I pray for the Palestinian Christians that you deliver them, free them from Hamas, set them in a safe place. And we pray for um, Ukraine and all the people there who need you and are struggling with war. Pray for all the nations, Lord, and all your people in the nations. You have people in every nation. Russia, um, India, Indonesia, everywhere. You have pe your people are everywhere. We thank you that you call people from every tribe, tongue, and nation, and that the nations are yours. Uh-oh, sorry, Kitty's leaving. All right, pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. Henry's leaving. All right. Bye.